Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So today we're going to be seeing a harder induction type question, which uh, they're quite common in HSE exams and in trial exams. So you should try to um, get as much practice as you can on these induction type questions. Uh, this one is fairly difficult uh, compared to your three unit induction types. So uh, it just takes practice and you'll see what you have to do. So we'll have a look at this example, and there's three parts, so we'll have a look over at each part in a separate video, because each part itself is quite long. Okay, so we'll have a look at the first part. Consider the Fibonacci sequence, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on, which may be defined as T1 equals T2, which equals 1, so the first two terms are 1, and T of m plus 2 equals Tn plus Tm plus 1. So this just means that each term is equal to the sum of the previous two terms. Okay, prove that t of n is equal to a to the power n minus b to the power n over root 5, where a and b are these two numbers here. Okay, so here we need to prove, in step 1, usually we would prove for n equals 1. But here, since this is dependent on two different terms, two different uh, recurrences that differ by 1, we need to prove true for n equals 1 and n equals 2. Okay, so let's start off with uh, n equals 1. So we look at n equals 1, and the left-hand side of this statement will be t1, and this is 1 by definition. Now, we have a look at the right-hand side. So this is going to be a to the power 1 minus b to the power 1 over root 5. Okay, so what's a to the power 1? That's just 1 plus root 5 over 2. And b is 1 minus root 5 over 2. 1 minus root 5 over 2. And this is all over square root of 5. Okay. Now, here we can distribute this minus 1 through and we'll get 1 minus 1, which is 0. And we get root 5 minus minus root 5. So that's root 5 plus root 5, which is 2 root 5 over 2 and all over root 5, and this of course is equal to 1. And so this is equal to the left hand side, and we can say therefore true for n equals 1. True for n equals 1. Okay, now we also need to prove for n equals 2. So we have n equals 2, the left hand side is equal to t2, which as well is equal to 1 by definition of the sequence. So t2 is equal to 1. Okay, now we want to have a look at the right hand side, which is a squared minus b squared over root 5. Okay, now remember a, a was 1 plus root 5 on 2. So squared minus 1 minus root 5 on 2 squared all over the square root of 5. Okay. Let's just move that up. Yep. Okay. So now we can expand this. So 1 plus root 5 over 2 all squared. That's going to be 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 root 5 plus root 5 squared, which is 5, over 2 squared, which is 4, minus 1 minus 2 root 5 plus 5 over 4. I'm sure you all know how to do this. It's just expanding. All over the square root of 5. Okay, now we can, here we have a common denominator, so we can just straight simplify. So we're going to have 1 minus 1, which is 0. 2 root 5 plus 2 root 5, which is 4 root 5. Here we're going to have 5 minus 5, which is 0. And that's going to be over 4, and all that is over root 5. Okay, and this will cancel with that, that will cancel with that, and we're left with 1, which is equal to the left-hand side. So therefore, it's true for n equals 2. Okay, so now... We need to make our assumptions. This is our inductive assumption. So remember what we actually want to prove. We want to prove this 
Now we need to assume it's true for n equals k, but we also need to assume it's true for n equals k plus 1, just like we had to prove it was true for n equals 1 and n equals 2. So, assume these two. T of k equals a to the k minus b to the k over the square root of 5, and t of k plus 1 equals a to the k plus 1 minus b to the k plus 1 over root 5. Okay. So now we are required to prove, this is what we're required to prove. We're required to prove that t of k plus 2 equals a to the k plus 2 minus b to the k plus 2 all over root 5. All right. Now, by our definition of the sequence, t of n plus 2 equals t of n plus t of n plus 1. So therefore, t of k plus 2, we should say the left-hand side, equals t of k plus 2, which is equal to t of k plus t of k plus 1, we should say by definition. So you should justify as much as you can your steps to maximize to make sure you maximize the amount of marks you get. Okay, now by our assumptions, we have that these two are equal to these expressions here. And so we have a to the k minus b to the k over root 5 plus a to the k plus 1 minus b to the k plus 1. It's a plus over root 5. Alright, now we need to try and manipulate this, or we should also say by assumption. Okay, now we need to try and manipulate this expression here to be equal to what we need to prove. So we need to equal this. Okay, so here we have a common uh, factor of root 5, and so let me just write this in this way. So group these together, and you'll see why we do this in a moment. Okay, now we can take out a to the k and b to the k in these two expressions. So we get a to the k, a plus 1. 1 plus a, which is the same thing, minus b to the k of 1 plus b over root 5. Alright, now what's our value of a? Value of a is 1 plus root 5 over 2. And so here we have 1 plus root 5 on 2 plus 1 minus b k and the value of b was 1 minus root 5 on 2. So 1 minus root 5 over 2. All over root 5. Okay. Now let's simplify this in here. So we get a k times, if we multiply by 2 to make a common denominator, so we can have 1 plus root 5 plus 2 all over 2. And so we're going to have 3 plus root 5 on 2 minus bk, we can do a similar thing here, and we'll get 3 minus root 5 on 2. Over root 5. Okay. Now, if you note that we want to get a k plus 2 minus b to the k plus 2 over root 5, so we look like we're almost there. We need to show that this here is... Um, a to the power 2, and this is b to the power 2. So we can write, but a squared is 1 plus root 5 over 2 squared, which is 1 plus 2 root 5 plus root 5 squared, which is 5, over 2 squared, so it should be 4, and this is equal to 6 plus 2 root 5 on 4, which is equal to, if we cancel 2 from top and bottom, we get 3 plus root 5 on 2, 
which is good because this is what we expect to get. And similarly, b squared is 1 minus root 5 over 2 squared. And you might say dot 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 because it follows the same procedure as with a squared and we get 3 minus root 5 on 2. Right, so b squared is 3 minus root 5 on 2, which we have here, and a squared is 3 plus root 5 on 2, which we have here. And so we have that the left-hand side of what we're trying to prove is equal to a to the k times a squared minus b to the k times b squared all over the square root of 5, and that is a to the k plus 2 minus b to the k plus 2 all over square root of 5, which is the right-hand side. So we've shown what we need to show. And then you make your uh, statement saying, since true for, now in this case, remember we had to prove for n equals 1 and 2 originally. So since true for n equals 1 and n equals 2, and true for n equals k plus 2. If n equals k and n equals k plus 1 are true. So we have n equals k which is 1 and n equals k plus 1 which is 2. And so therefore n equals k plus 2 which would be 1 plus 2 which is 3. So that means 3 is true, and so this process repeats. So we can say true for all n greater than or equal to 1. So since true for n equals 1 and true and n equals 2, and it's true for n equals k plus 2, if n equals k and n equals k plus 1 are true, then it's true for all integers n greater than or equal to 1. And that completes this fairly tough induction question. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video.